So again, my name is uh, Jocelyn P. Reyes, a science research specialist of the Material Science Division, uh, Industrial Technology Development Institute under the Department of Science and Technology. So today, I will be discussing the following major topics. This include the introduction of ceramics, the ceramic manufacturing technology, the ceramic industry in the Philippines, and the challenges, opportunities, and the future of ceramics in the Philippines. So moving on, uh, let me first give you the main topics under the introduction. So first, I will be discussing or defining what is ceramics, the history of Philippine ceramics, the categories, the types, the properties, and the applications of ceramics. So moving on, let's start with the uh, with, the, with defining what is ceramics. So ceramics are actually found everywhere. So ito po ay part na po ng ating daily life. So kahit saan po tayo magpunta, makakakita po tayo ng ceramics. For example po sa mga bahay po natin. So pag sa labas pa lang po ng bahay, makikita na po natin yung ating mga paso. And then... Upon entering our house, una po nating makikita yung mga floor tiles. So ito po made of ceramics din po. And then sa ating mga living room, andito po makikita natin yung mga uh, decorative items, mga flower vases, mga figurines, mga ashtrays. So lahat po ito made of ceramics. And then moving on po sa ating dining area, andito naman po yung ating mga dinner wares. Yung mga plato, mga coffee mugs, yung ating mga ceramic bowls. So lahat po ito made of ceramics. And then hindi lang po dyan nagtatapos. Pagpasok po natin sa ating mga uh, comfort room, sa bathroom, makikita din po natin dito yung ating mga lavatories or yung ating mga lababo and yung ating sanitary wares or yung mga inidoro all made of ceramics. Kaya nga po, parte po talaga ito ng ating daily life. So, ano po ba ang ceramics? So, the word ceramic comes from the Greek word keramikos, which means of pottery. So, ang ceramic po ay isang inorganic material. Ibig sabihin po, pag inorganic, hindi po siya uh, galing sa living things like plants or animals. So, ito po ay galing sa mga minerals. So, ito po ay non-metallic solid, generally based on an oxide, nitride, boride, or carbide that is fired at a high temperature. So ito po yung mga examples ng ating mga ceramics. Meron po tayong terracotta or mga artwares po yung ating mga paso at end palayok. So let's move on to the history of Philippine ceramics. So actually po yung history ng Philippine ceramics can be divided into three ages or era. First, we have the Neolithic Age. Ito po ay nag-start 4,000 years ago and then followed by Metal Age uh, which started from 2,800 to, to 1,000 years ago and then the last one is the Contemporary Age which uh, began in the 16th century. So napakatagal na po ng ating history sa ceramics. So ngayon po, I will be showing you a video which shows how rich our ceramic culture and tradition is. So ito po ay nasa National Museum po. Ang title po ng exhibit na ito ay Palayok, the Ceramic Heritage of the Philippines. So let's watch this video po. The Palayok is a familiar item we would mostly see 
in traditional households around the Philippines. It is often viewed as something from the countryside, a symbol of our pre-modern lives. However, who would think that clay pots also played an important role in shaping our culture? Throughout history, ceramics serve as a testament to human ingenuity. Taking clay from the earth to mold with water and cook with fire, our ancestors were able to produce an object that aided them in their survival. For archaeologists, ceramics have been crucial in piecing together our past. From whole vessels to its broken fragments, ceramics helped us understand and appreciate our cultural heritage. This Palayok exhibit presents the rich ceramic tradition of the Philippines. From its early history to the present, it tells the story of our nation from the perspective of pots, how an object molded from clay also shaped our society. The earliest evidence of pottery in the Philippines was dated around 4,000 years ago, believed to be brought by our maritime ancestors speaking the Proto-Austronesian language. Their arrival ushered a new cultural period in the Philippines known as the Neolithic, bringing with them novel means of storage and cooking, weaving technology, as well as the knowledge on seafaring and agriculture from the evidence of stone and shell artifacts. From its introduction, earthenware pottery rose to prominence in our culture. At around 2,500 years ago, as our ancestors began expanding their maritime networks, pottery have been widely manufactured and used in various shapes and sizes. A vast sharing and movement of ideas and objects has also occurred in this period as we began interacting with other societies within the islands and the neighboring regions. This was observed from the similarities of pottery designs and jade ornaments in early Southeast Asia. This period, known as the Metal Age, also brought in metal tools, believed to be acquired from interactions outside the islands. What actually defined the Metal Age in the Philippines is the role of pottery in death rituals, being used as offerings and most importantly, as burial vessels. The widespread jar burial practice has been very prevalent in this period, reflecting their complex beliefs on death and the afterlife. At the turn of the first millennium CE, the Philippines once again witnessed a shift of cultural attitudes with the introduction of new ceramic types. The rise of Asian maritime trade in this period brought in stoneware and porcelain from China and mainland Southeast Asia, changing our notion of social prestige. This trade ceramics became the elite objects, slowly replacing the earthenware vessels and its prominence, especially in burial and other ritual practices. Foreign ceramics were among our main trade imports until the arrival of the Spanish in the 16th century. Philippines opened itself to a global-wide trading network in the 16th century through the Manila Galleon trade. More ceramics from Europe and other parts of Asia also found its way into the archipelago, increasing further its value among the Filipinos. Bricks and tiles made of baked clay were also introduced around this time. 
However, the high demand of foreign ceramics didn't stop our local potters in producing their own. New ceramic forms emerged, either imitating the foreign wares or producing new types, which may have competed with the foreign counterparts. For 4,000 years, our ceramic tradition remained alive in our society. The presence of current pottery industries only shows how important the palayok still is among the Filipinos. From traditional cooking and storage vessels, our contemporary potters have also produced flower pots, ornamental vessels, as well as clay bricks and tiles, which still can be seen in many households. Despite the introduction of metal and plastic containers, ceramics have somehow managed to persist and stay in the cultural fabric of our nation. The Palayok has always been and will remain part of the nation's thriving material culture, a portion of our cultural identity which has shaped our society for thousands of years. Okay, so uh, uh, kung gusto niyo pong mapanood itong uh, gallery na ito, open pa po ito sa uh, National Museum of the Philippines. And dito niyo po talaga makikita kung gano'ng ka-significant yung role ng ceramics po sa ating Philippine society and culture. So moving on, let's discuss the two categories of ceramics. We have the traditional ceramics and the advanced ceramics. So for traditional ceramics, uh, this includes earthenware, stoneware, porcelain, and refractories. So traditional ceramics are used uh, during our day-to-day -day activities. So ang pinaka-common po na traditional ceramics that we use daily ay, ay yun pong mga dinnerwares. So on the other side, yung advanced ceramics naman po, is ito po yung uh, hindi po natin actually sila nakikita. But ginagamit din po natin siya sa ating pamumuhay. Examples of these are alumina, zirconia, bioceramics, silicon carbide, and silicon nitride. So bakit ko po nasabing hindi po natin sila nakikita? Kasi po, uh, sila po ay isa lang pong component ng isang malaking material for example po, like yung mga engines ng mga kotse, so nasa loob lang po sila. Like for, for bioceramics naman po, nasa loob din po siya ng katawan ng tao. So hindi po natin sila nakikita. So ito po ang pinagkaiba ng advanced ceramics at traditional ceramics. So let's uh, discuss the types of traditional ceramics. So we have earthenware stoneware and porcelain so let's discuss each one of them so earthenware pag sinabi pong earthenware ito na po yung oldest type of ceramics and ito po yung most commonly found everywhere ito po ay medyo mababa lang ang firing temperature niya usually less than uh, 1100 degrees centigrade or yung commonly firing temperature po niya is 10 1,050 degrees centigrade. So, ang earthenware po ay opaque and non-vitreous, soft and capable of being scratched with a knife. So, dahil nga po mababa lang yung kanyang temperature, firing temperature, so hindi po siya uh, vitrified pa. So, malambot lang po siya, hindi pa po siya dense, so madali po siyang ma-scratch ng knife. Kaya, uh, also, they are less durable than stoneware dahil nga po mababa din ang kanilang mechanical strength. And ang pinaka property po ng earthenware is dahil nga po low temperature lang siya, nag absorb pa po siya ng water. So, porous pa po siya. Kaya usually, nilalagyan pa po siya ng glaze para maging uh, waterproof or food safe. So, ito po ang mga examples ng ating earthenware. Ito po ang ating terracotta or using red clay, and ito naman po yung ating mga white wares.
Usually po, ginagamit po to for mga decorative items like flower vases. Yan po, sa so nakikita niyo po. Ang difference po nila is iba po yung clay na ginapit. Dito po, they use the red clay and dito naman po ay white clay. So, ayan po. So, let's now go to stoneware. So, pag sinabi naman pong stoneware, eto po ay tinatawag na stoneware dahil po yung appearance niya after firing ay, ay talagang parang stone. So, ibig sabihin, dense na po siya. And ang temperature po niya is around uh, 1200 to 1250 degrees centigrade. So, durable na po siya. And, non-porous na po siya. So, hindi na po siya nag absorb ng water. Kasi po, ang kanyang water of absorption ay around 1 to 5% na lang po. So, napakaliit na po compared sa earthenware na around mga 10 to 15% pa ang kanyang absorption. So, minsan po, ang mga stoneware, hindi na po siya kailangan i-glaze dahil nga po, uh, hindi na siya porous. And katulad nga po ng sinabi ko, ang color po niya is brown, or gray, depende po kung anong clay yung gagamitin. So, ito po yung examples ng ating mga stonewares. So, nakikita nyo po medyo grayish or brownish na po ang color niya at very dense na po siya dahil po ang firing niya is around 1250 degrees centigrade. Then, we proceed to porcelain. So, ano po ba ang porcelain? Actually, ang porcelain may ibang tawag po sa kanya. Ito po ay kaolin or china clay. Kasi ito rin po ang pinaka-hardest of all the, the traditional ceramics. Kaya po siya tinawag na china clay kasi sinabi nila na nag-umpisa daw po itong porcelain sa China in 1600 BC. Kaya po tinawag din po siyang fine china. So ang porcelain po ay meron siyang high melting points. Dahil nga po mataas ang kanyang firing temperature, so they are heat resistant. Usually po, itong mga porcelain, ito po yung ating mga microwavable ceramics. So since po hindi na po siya porous, so pag nilagyan po natin ng pagkain sa loob, hindi na po nag absorb ng water yung ating porcelain, so yung labas po niya, hindi na po siya umiinit. So yun po ang isang property ng porcelain. At syempre, Mataas na po yung kanyang hardness and napakatibay na po niya. And they are considerably durable. They are long-lasting and hard-wearing. They are po. And also, they have low electrical and thermal conductivity. So, uh, dahil po mataas ang kanilang firing temperature, pwede na po siyang gamitin as insulators. And dahil po uh, mataas din ang kanyang firing temperature, nagiging chemically inert po siya. Ibig sabihin, hindi na po siya nagre-react with other chemicals. So, pwedeng-pwede po siyang gamitin sa pagkain. Food safe na po siya. Yan. So, ito po yung ating mga examples ng porcelain. Ito po yung ating tinatawag na bone china. Ang bone china po ay isang example ng soft porcelain. Ang difference po niya dito sa ating mga China porcelain ay sa bone china po, ginagamitan lang po siya ng bone ash as, the, as one of the main ingredients po. Kaya po siya tinawag na bone china. So now, let's proceed to the properties of ceramics. So ano-ano po ba yung mga properties of ceramics? Kaya sila nagagamit sa iba't ibang application. So uh, most of the ceramics po, especially yung ating mga stoneware and porcelain dahil mataas na po yung kanilang firing temperature, uh, mataas na po yung kanilang hardness. So, pwede po siyang gamitin as abrasive or cutting tools. Then, sabi ko nga po, meron silang high melting point. So, ganun din po, nagagamit po sila as refractory material. Pag sinabi pong refractory material, ito po yung mga materials na ginagamit sa lining ng ating mga furnace. And then, Uh, pwede rin po siyang gamitin as thermal insulators dahil nga po uh, mataas yung kanyang melting temperature. 
Also, meron din po silang high electricity resistance, kaya pwedeng pwede po sila gamitin sa insulators. And then, uh, they have low mass density, kaya po pwede silang gamitin as lightweight materials. And on the other hand, ang negative lang po sa ceramics ay they are very brittle. So, brittle po siya in nature. Uh, madali po siyang mabasag. And ang kanyang ductility and ay zero po and very low tensile strength. Hindi po siya katulad ng plastic na pwede siyang i-bend or i-stretch. Kapag ang ceramics po binend ninyo, basag na po siya. So, yun po ang negative lang sa properties ng ceramics. So now, let's proceed to the applications of traditional ceramics. So katulad nga po ng nabanggit ko kanina, uh, nagagamit po ang ating mga traditional ceramics for bricks. Ito pong bricks, ginagamit po sa ating mga uh, uh, lining ng ating kiln or pwede rin po siya as decorative sa ating mga walls. And then, meron din po siyang application for dinner wares, yung mga plates po natin, and flower vases. And then, ginagamit din po siya as floor tiles, wall tiles. And yung ating mga porcelain po, ginagamit na rin po siya for dentures and even sa microchips. So, ito lang po yung mga traditional applications ng ceramics. So, now... Let's proceed to the second major topic, which is the ceramic manufacturing technology. So, paano po ba natin minamanufacture or pinoproduce ang ating mga ceramics? So, under this topic, I will be discussing the raw materials, the forming process, the firing, the different kilns, and the different glazes, the types of glazes, and its composition, how to apply these glazes, and the ceramic glaze defects. So let's begin with the raw materials. So actually po in the Philippines, there is a wealth of materials suitable for pottery making. Kahit saan pong probinsya, madami po tayong makikita ng mga red clay, mga source ng red clay, or even white clay. So actually po, ang raw materials for ceramics can be divided into two groups. We have the plastic, and the non-plastic. So, under plastic, ito po yung ating mga clay. Meron po tayong ball clay and china clay or kaolin clay. So, pag sinabi pong ball clay, medyo uh, dark po ang color niya. Usually, mga black. Black po ang color ng ball clay dahil po uh, madami po siyang impurities like mga iron oxides. And then, compared to ating china or kaolin clay, so, mas lesser po ang kanyang iron oxide, kaya mas maputi po siya. So, usually, ang, ang gamit po ng ating clay is for plasticity po. So, ito po yung nagbibigay ng binding and plasticity po sa ating ceramics. So, ito rin po yung nagbibigay ng coloring after firing. Katulad nga po ng sinabi ko, pag red clay po ang ginamit natin, ang product din po natin ay magiging terracotta or red, mga red pots. And then, kung gumamit naman po tayo ng white clay, like for example, yung mga dolomite, so white naman po yung ating mga products. So for non-plastic, we have feldspar, silica, and talc. Yung ating feldspar po, ito po yung parang nagiging flux, nag-a-act siya as flux. Pag sinabi pong flux, ito po yung nagpapalower ng ating firing temperature. So, and then, meron din po tayong silica. Itong silica naman po, in the form of quartz po siya. So, ito naman po yung nagbibigay ng parang glass former dun po sa ating ceramics. And then po, yung talc, ginagamit naman po, minsan, para... Uh, Para same time, magbigay din ng whiteness dun sa body. So now, uh, paano po ba form ang ating mga ceramics? Actually po, there are, these are the very common forming methods of ceramics. First, we have the slip casting. Then we have the hand wheel forming, the jiggering, and the pressing. 
So for slip casting, ito po yung process wherein uh, fill po natin yung molds with slip and then allowing it to solidify and after a while, forming a layer called the cast inside the molds walls. So pag sinabi po natin slip, ito po yung liquid clay. So paano po gumawa ng slip? Yung ating clay lang po, hahaluan lang po natin to ng water around 40 to 50%. And then, lalagyan po natin siya ng defloculant. Usually po yung sodium silicate, about 0.3 to 0.6%. And then, atin lang po itong ibablanch. And then, pag okay na po yung kanyang um, workability, so pwede ipour sa ating mga plaster mold. So, manual slip cut. Put through sieve to remove any impurities. The slip is then poured into the mold. It is poured carefully to avoid any bubbles being trapped in the slip. It is soon absorbed and creates a lining against the mold. To check the thickness, the caster cuts into the lining. If it is not the desired thickness yet, it can be left for a while longer. The excess slip is poured out and the mold is left to dry. When it has finally hardened to a point where it can be handled, the piece is removed from the mold but it will be left to air dry further. The seam left by the mold is then cut off and any imperfections fixed. It is then dissipated and finally glazed, leaving a simply produced product. So, et, ayan po ang manual... Ay. Slip casting is a low right. mass production. So, yun po yung uh, manual slip casting. So, usually itong po manual slip casting ay ginagamit lang po sa mga maliliit na products, maliliit na items na kaya pong buhaten lang ng isang tao. While for automated slip casting, usually po, ito po ay ginag ginagamit sa mga malalaking products na po, like yung ating mga sanitary wares or yung ating mga lava lavatories. So, kasi hindi na po siya kayang buhaten ng tao. So, ginagamitan na po siya ng automation. So, let's watch this video po. So now let's proceed to the second common method of forming ceramics. We have the potter's wheel or throwing. So wheel throwing is the process of forming clay into shapes on a potter's wheel. So napaka importante po ng potter's wheel so throwing. So it is the, a common technique for making ceramic mugs, bowls, and plates. So yung potter ang tawag po dun sa nagpa-potter's wheel ay potter, siya po yung nag-shape and nag-form ng wet clay on the wheel. Then, let's the clay harden and dry a bit to a leather hard stage before finishing and returning the piece to the wheel for trimming. So, eto po yung common nowadays. Madami na pong nagsusulputan ng mga studio. Kahit saan po, kahit even dito sa Metro Manila, Pwede na po kayong matuto ng potter's wheel. mag -e enroll lang po kayo, pwedeng per hour, per session. So, meron pong mura, meron din mahal. So, depende po kung saan kayo mag -e enroll So, ganito po siya. 
So let's watch this video. Well, I thought I'm just going to make a, a bit of a fruit bowl, pasta bowl, salad bowl, serving bowl, whatever you like, really. So it's about three pound plate. I'm going to make this on a bit of a, a sort of a foot, you know, like a, an upright foot. So. Center it quite upwards because I'm going to have to like say it's going to have a bit of a foot on it. So I don't want to go anywhere near to the bottom, I want to leave a good thickness of clay so I can make the foot. So to form a bit of a foot, I'm just going to sort of squeeze in at the base like so. Lift out and upwards. So basically, I'm just sort of forming a basic bowl shape. Again, I'll just push it at the base to narrow the foot a bit. I'll tidy off all the mess at the bottom when I've finished. And it's just as as easy as basically from the abs inside out. Stretching it out to form the bowl. Like so. Just sort of rolling the top over it. Just a touch. That's it really. Quite easy, you just make a tube, make a sort of triangular shake, pull it out, upwards and outwards, and then just sort of splay it out from the inside really. Quite a quick, quite a quick way of making a bottle on the foot. So tomorrow when it's drier I'll just turn the foot, trim the foot. To a nicer shape. Basically, that's about it for now. A simple sort of fruit bowl, salad bowl. Ayan, so okay. So, uh, ang pinaka importante po sa potter's wheel or throwing ay yung pag center po ng ating clay sa potter's wheel. So, dapat po nasa center siya. Kaya po yun sa first part nakita niyo po. Uh, binato po siya dun sa ating potter's wheel. So, yun po, kaya po siya tinawag na throwing kasi ito throw mo siya sa potter's wheel na dapat po nasa center po siya. So, now let's proceed to jiggering. So, jiggering is another process of forming pottery that employs a spinning plaster mold and a ta tapered template to press soft clay or porcelain against it. So, actually, yung jiggering po, is similar, quite similar sa ating potter's wheel dahil umiikot din po siya but meron po siyang uh, plaster mold sa ilalim and then meron po siyang template na pinipress para ma-form yung desired shape po natin. So usually jiggering po ay ginagamit sa, sa paggawa po ng ating mga plates and mga bowls. So eto po, let's watch this video po on jiggering.
Okay. So, the last method of forming ceramics is pressing. So, pag sinabing pressing, pwede po siyang ipepress natin ang clay or pwede ring powder materials. So, pressing ceramics means that granular or powdery materials are pressed under pressure to form a solid body with a geometrical shape. So, ito po, uh, pwede siyang hand pressing. So, pinipress lang po natin yung clay to form yung desired shape natin. So, actually, sa hand pressing, pwede rin po siyang uh, coil. Iko-coil po natin yung clay. Pwede rin po natin siyang i- parang slab type. Mag-form po tayo ng mga slabs and then ipipress po natin siya. So, ito po yung mga different types of hand pressing. So, meron naman po tayong powder pressing. Ito po, uh, ginagamit usually sa paggawa ng tiles. Ang ginagamit po dito is very fine powders po. So, ito po. Let's watch this video on powder pressing. Today, we will see Ceramic Tiles Manufacturing Process The process starts with arrival of raw material in the plant. Then, the material is mixed. After that, it is passed by a master conveyor. Here, in the storage tank, the mixture is mixed with water and ceramic pellets to form a liquid material. After that, it is passed into large underground storage tank. At this stage, the atomizer powder is fed into a holding vat. Then, the powder is distributed into the mold. Next, the powder is turns into solid mass. And here, moisture is removed. Later, tiles are stored into temporary storage bins. Then, rollers made designs on the tiles. Here, we can see the amazing painted tiles. After that, tiles are tested. The glaze is applied to tiles by spray waterfall screening. At this stage, the glaze is solidified by kiln and moisture is removed in the ceramic. After that, the finished product is inspected. Finally, the tiles are packed into boxes. At last, the tiles are stored into yard for shipping. Okay, so after na po na, na form natin ang ating mga ceramics, ang susunod po na process ay ang firing. So, ito po ang pinaka-importanteng proseso sa paggawa ng ceramics. So, firing is the process of bringing clay and glazes up to a high temperature. The final aim is to heat the object to the point that the clay and glazes are mature, that is, that they have reached their optimal level of firing. So, meron po tayong mga firing terminologies na kailangan po nating tandaan sa ceramics. 
production. So first is the bisque firing. So pag sinabi kong bisque firing, so after po natin ma-form yung ating mga ceramics either by throwing or by slip casting after drying, if a fire po natin siya, ito po yung ating first firing in ceramics and we call it bisque firing. So this refers to the first time the newly shaped clay pots or greenware go through high temperature heating. It is done to vitrify which means to turn it glass-like to a point that the pottery can have a glaze adhere to the surface. So after po ng bisque firing, Ang second firing po sa ceramics ay tinatawag na glaze firing or sometimes called glossed firing. So, yung liquid glaze, ina-apply po natin siya sa ating bisque ware. And then kapag finar po natin the second time, ang tawag po dito ay glaze or glossed firing. Actually, meron pa pong isa. Yung ating overglaze firing. So, ito po yung third firing sa ceramics. Kung after glazing po, gusto pa po natin siyang lagyan ng mga decoration above the glaze. So, ito po ang tinatawag na overglaze firing. So, ito po yung decoration technique which involves painting with a low-fire glaze, usually less than 1000 degrees centigrade, on top of the previously fired medium glaze or high fired glaze. So after the design is painted on, the piece is fired in the kiln once more until the low fired glaze reaches its melting point. Actually, yung over, over glaze firing po, much, much lower ang firing temperature niya sa glossed firing. So, eto po, tandaan po natin. Eto po yung ating mga dried wares. After forming, ang tawag po dito ay green wear. Then after po natin ma-fire ito or first firing, ang tawag na po dito ay bisque wear or biscuit wear. Then after po lagyan natin ito ng glaze and then i-fire po natin for the second time, ito na po ang tinatawag na glossed fired. Okay, so now let's proceed to the classifications of kiln. So saan po ba natin? Ano po ba yung ginagamit natin para maluto yung ating mga ceramics? So uh, actually po ang classifications ng kiln can be it can be classified by shape, anong itsura po niya, by mode of operation. So ano po yung ginagamit sa kanya na na materials para uminit siya at maattain yung kanyang firing temperature. And then yung heat source, madami rin pong klase ng source ng heat. Then, yung heating method and by the direction of flame movement. So, let's start with the classification by shape. So, katulad nga po ng sinabi ko, meron tayong mga round kiln, uh, square kiln, and rectangular kiln. So, usually, itong mga small kilns na to, ito po yung ating ginagamit ng ating mga potters sa kanilang mga studio or yung mga maliliit lang po na items yung kanilang uh, pinoproduce. And then for this one, yung bigger type, uh, ginagamitan na po ito ng LPG or pwede rin pong electric. And ito po, ginagamit na po sa mga malalaking wares or items or products po. So the kilns are also classified by the mode of operation. So pag sinabing mode of operation, ito po ay yung intermittent kiln. We have the semi-continuous kiln and the continuous kiln. So pag sinabi pong intermittent kiln, ito po yung kiln na ginagamit by batch. Ibig sabihin po ng batch, uh, ilo-load natin yung ating mga wares and then ifa-fire natin siya and then papalamigin and then i-unload. So yun po yung batch na tinatawag. Unlike po sa continuous kiln, usually po, ang ginagamit po dito na kiln ay yung mga tunnel kilns, yung sobrang ahaba na kiln. So, dahil po siya tunnel kiln, yung firing zones po niya ay nahahati sa tatlo. So, meron po siyang preheating zone, and then meron siyang heating zone, and the cooling zone. So, tuloy-tuloy lang po yung pasok ng ating ceramics. So, kaya po siya tinawag na continuous. Yan. And then, yung kiln din po natin can be classified by the heat source. So, pwede po tayong gumamit ng mga wood 
Pwede rin pong coal, pwede gas, like LPG, pwede rin pong oil, burner, and then, of course, yung ating electric kiln. So, usually po, sa ating mga uh, province, ating mga uh, sa iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas, usually po, ang ginagamit nila is wood burning kiln. Dito po kasi sa Metro Manila, hindi po pwedeng gamitin to kasi <laughs> wala po tayong space and very ano po siya, uh, unsafe po siya gamitin dahil nga po doon sa mga fumes na ipoproduce po niya. So usually po, uh, dito po sa city, ang usually ginagamit ay mga electric kiln or yung ating mga LPG, gas burning kilns. So, ito po yung examples ng ating mga wood-fired kilns. And then, ito naman po yung ating mga electric kilns. So, meron po siyang uh, medyo maliit lang. And then, meron naman pong sobrang laki. Depende po sa production ng company. So, the kiln can be also classified by the heating method. So, meron po tayong sinasabing direct firing kiln. Muffle kiln and semi-muffle kiln. So, pag sinabing direct firing kiln, yung mga wares po natin, naka-direct po siya dun sa ating mga heating elements. So, na, ano po siya, parang naka-directly in contact po siya with the heating element. Pero hindi po natin pwedeng itatama sa ating mga candle wires. Pwede po siya gawin sa bisque firing. Wala pong kaso yon. But pag may glaze na po yung ating wares, hindi po dapat siya dumidikit dun sa ating uh, mga candle wires. Otherwise, pag nag-melt po yung ating glaze, uh, recheck na po yon. So, compared so, sa muffle kiln naman, ang muffle kiln kasi, uh, meron pa siyang layer in between ng ating mga cantal wires. So, wala pong direct contact nung heat dun sa ating mga ceramic wires. So, yun po yung difference. Then, it is also classified by the direction of the flame movement. So, we have up draft kiln, down draft kiln, and horizontal draft kiln. So, ito pong slide will show the illustration of paano po yung difference ng bawat isa. So, pag sinabi po nating updraft kiln, ito po yung commonly used by our manufacturers. So, from here po, andito po nag naggagaling yung source ng heat, and then paakyat lang po yung, yung init niya going to the chimney. Kaya tinawag po siyang updraft. Compared sa crossdraft, medyo paikot pa po siya. Yung design po ng kiln ay paikot siya going up, then down, then paakyat po sa chimney. And then yung sa downdraft, ganun din po siya. Instead na paakyat naman siya from the source, ito naman po, pababa yung heat niya. Yan po. And then the kilns are also classified by the use. So sinabi ko po nga, di ba tatlong beses niluluto ang ating ceramics? So depende pag bisque firing, Gloss firing and decorating fight, de decorating kiln. So, example, pag earthenware po ang ating pinoproduce, ang bisque firing po nito is around uh, 1,000 degrees centigrade. And then ang ating gloss firing, nasa 1050 degrees centigrade. And kapag nilagyan pa po natin siya ng overglaze at dinecorate natin, uh, if a fire pa ulit natin siya at around 800 degrees centigrade. Yan po. So, ngayon po, uh, ipapakita ko po ang isang video galing po sa YouTube. Ito po yung uh, traditional geba. Ito po ay ginagawa sa Bauco Mountain Province. So, panood din po natin kung paano nila uh, fina-fire or niluluto yung kanilang mga palayo.
So ito naman po is another video uh, showing the Philippine traditional block clay pot making po. So panoorin po natin to. Welcome to the Ancient Cookware Channel. In this episode, we will show you how the beautiful Filipino clay pots, known as polyox, are made. For that, we have to take you to the countryside, far from the big city of Manila. There, we introduce you to our artisans and the beautiful polyox they make. The tedious process begins with the preparation of the clay. The clay is brought to them from the local river as dry chunks. There, they slowly coax the clay back to life by adding water. They know exactly just how much water to add. Too little, and the clay is too brittle and not malleable. Too much, and it becomes too watery and won't hold its shape. The process continues with the kneading of the clay until it fully absorbs all the water and becomes soft enough to mold. To mold the clay, the artisans uses a manual potter's wheel. They rotate the wheel while pinching the clay to form the sides of the pot. After forming the walls of the pot, she smooths it using her hands and a wet piece of leather. The shaping of the bottom and outside is the most interesting process of all. The artisans uses a wooden paddle and continuously hits the pot to give the pot the familiar shape of the polyoc. The artisans then make the tops of the pots, pinching the knob in the center. The top is further smoothed by hitting it with a wooden paddle. After the pots have dried and hardened, the artisans coats the outside of the pots and lid with a watery clay. This slurry hardens in the sun. After which, the artisans rub the entire pot and lid with a small glass bottle, a process known as burnishing. The burnishing process is a very labor-intensive process and results in polishing the clay pot with a beautiful sheen without the use of glazes. In the final steps, the pots are fired in an open fire without the use of a kiln. The pots are stacked on and covered with bamboo sticks. On top of the bamboo, they place palm fronds and use dried straw as kindling. This is one of the oldest pottery firing methods known.
Once the pots have been fired sufficiently and reached the correct temperature, the artisans begin to smother out the flames with rice husks. The dried rice husks and smothered wood begin to smoke profusely, which penetrates the clay and gives it its beautiful black color. Slowly, the artisans begin to fish the pots and tops out of the fire and sets them aside. To ensure that the pots did not crack during the firing process, the artisans tap each pot and listen for the distinctive bell-like ringing sound of an undamaged pot separating any that have cracked. And that is how the clay pots we sell from the Philippines are made. Okay, so nakita nyo po kung gano kahirap and gano ka tedious po yung ginagawa ng ating mga lola and lolo sa ating mga probinsya paano po nila ginagawa yung ating mga palayok so gusto ko lang pong sabihin so sana po tangkilikin po natin yung ating sariling mga palayok kasi nakita naman po natin kung gano ka tedious nila ginagawa po ito ayan po so now uh, let's proceed to glazes so after na po natin ma-fire yung ating mga ceramic wares Gusto pa po natin silang pagandahin, i-improve yung kanilang appearance. So, lalagyan po natin sila ng glazes. So, ano po ba ang glazes? So, a pottery glaze is a resistant layer of a glass-like substance which gets amalgamated on a pottery item when placed in a kiln at high temperature. So, katulad nga po ng sinabi ko, it enhances the aesthetic and functional value of an object. So, yung glaze din po, nag add siya ng strength sa ating pottery by giving it a tougher and smoother surface. Also, glazing adds a safe coating to your bisque fired wares, making it food safe and waterproof. So, ito po ang examples ng ating mga glazes. So, using different oxides, different stains, ito na po siya. So ngayon, let's proceed to the types of glazes. Actually po, there are two types of glazes. We have the traditional glazes and the contemporary glazes. So pag sinabing traditional glazes, ito na po yung ginagamit since historical time pa po. So meron po tayong mga ash glazes, feldspatic glaze, yung ating lead, salt, and tin. And then, pag sinabi naman pong contemporary glazes, eto na po yung ating mga commercial glazes na ginagamitan na po siya ng mga frit. So, eto po yung ating earthenware lead free glaze. We have the earthenware glazes containing fritted lead. Then, we have the stoneware and mid-fired glazes and the raku glazes which uh, originated in Japan. So, Ano po ba ang composition ng ating mga glazes? Kung ang ating body po, ang ceramic body ay composed of clay, silica, and feldspar, ang composition naman po ng mga glazes ay medyo iba po. But meron pa rin po siyang silica dahil po yung silica, ito po yung nag, nag turn dun sa ating glaze into a glass-like substance kapag na-heat na po natin siya. And then, yung flint po is a source of silica din po na nagpo-provide ng great finish to our pottery. And then, another composition is alumina. So, it helps the glaze to stick correctly onto the clay surface. So, it keeps the glaze intact and doesn't let it run off the piece when heated at high temperatures. So, another uh, component of our glazes, yung flux na tinatawag. So, katulad po ng sa body, meron tayong flux, which is feldspar. Sa glazes naman po, ang flux na ginagamit ay yung mga fritted, fritted glazes po. So, ito po ay 
composition ng iba't ibang minerals like bone ash, iron, zinc, sodium, magnesium, at iba't ibang klase pa po. And then we also add colorants para po uh, depende kung anong color yung gusto natin gamitin sa ating glaze. So, pwede po tayong gumamit ng mga oxides like iron oxide. It will give us a reddish color, chromium oxide, greenish color, and cobalt, blue color. So, depende po sa atin kung anong colorants yung ating i-add sa ating glazes. Then, we also use modifiers po. So, pwede natin tong i-add para po uh, kasi pwede po tayong guma gumawa ng opaque glaze or transparent glaze. Yan po. So, paano po ba natin ina-apply itong glaze sa ating bisquare? So, ito po yung mga common methods of applying glaze. We have the dipping, brushing, and pouring. So, mag-show po ako ng video paano po ito ginagawa. So, ito po yung dipping. Yan. So, dinidip lang po siya sa glaze. Yung glaze po pala, paano po ba siya ginagawa? Actually po, yung mga iba't ibang composition ng glaze, uh, haluan lang po natin siya ng tubig, about 50% of water, and then mag add po tayo ng parang uh, CMC para maging maganda yung workability ng ating glaze. And then, i-measure po natin yung kanyang... Uh, Ano tawag doon? Specific gravity. So, ang specific gravity po ng glaze ay dapat nasa 1.4 to 1.6. Compared doon sa specific gravity po ng ating body na may, mas malapot po siya, around 1.6 to 1.8 po. So, another method of glazing po is pouring. Then we have the brushing technique. Ayan po. So, simple lang po ang application ng glaze. So, ngayon po, kahit simple lang po yung pag-apply ng ating mga glazes sa ating bisquare, madami rin pong defects sa glazing. So, nangyayari po itong mga defects na to kapag hindi po compatible or hindi fit yung ating body sa glaze po. So, Ang mga common defects po in ceramic glazes are ito po, crazing, shivering, crawling, pinholing, and blistering. So, uh, sa body kasi po, ang measure po natin yung thermal expansion ng body and yung thermal expansion ng glazes po. So, dapat po, ang thermal expansion ng body and glaze, magfi-fit po siya. So, paano po natin masasabing magfi-fit po siya? So, dapat po ang thermal expansion ng ating body as ay konting-konting uh, mataas lang po sa ating thermal expansion ng gla glazes. Otherwise, kung hindi po niya ito ma-meet, magkakaroon po tayo ng defects. So, one defect po is crazing. So, ito po ay ang common, most common glaze defect. And sabi nila, 
the easiest to correct. So, sabi ko nga po, ang cause po nito ay, ay yung improper fit between the body and glaze. So, nangyayari po sa crazing, masyadong mataas po yung thermal expansion ng glaze sa body. Di ba? Ang sabi ko po, dapat mas mataas konti ang body sa glaze. So, sa crazing po, lumalabas na mas mataas po yung thermal expansion ng glaze. So, kaya po, nagkakaroon siya ng mga fine cracks. So, paano po ang gagawin pag meron pong crazing ang ating glazes. So, kailangan po nating i-adjust or i-alter yung ating glaze composition or yung ating body composition po. So, meron po tayong mga i-add na mga ingredients po para ma-lower yung thermal expansion ng glaze. Then, another defect is shivering. So, shivering is the most problematic of glaze defects. So, Ito rin po ay cause ng improper glaze fit. Pero ito naman po ay kabaligtaran ng ating uh, crazing. Kung crazing ay napakataas ng ating uh, thermal expansion sa glaze, dito naman po napakababa ng thermal expansion ng glaze. Sobrang baba naman po. So, ano po ba ang dapat gawin kapag merong shivering? Ito po ang itsura ng shivering. Parang nag-peel off na po yung glaze natin dun sa body. So, medyo dangerous po to kasi paano po kapag ginagamit ito sa pagkain and then humalo sa ating pagkain. So, so medyo delikado po yon. So, ang dapat po gawin is to lower. Medyo i-alter din po natin yung ating glaze composition. So, ilo-lower natin yung silica content and then i-increase po natin yung ating mga fluxes. And pwede rin po natin i-increase yung maturing point of the glaze by decreasing the boric oxide with corresponding silicon dioxide. Yan po. So, the next defect in glazes is crawling. So, ganito po ang itsura ng crawling. So, ito naman po is caused by a high index of surface tension in the melting glaze. So, ibig sabihin po, may problema sa adhesion problem. So, ibig sabihin, yung ating uh, B-square, maaaring may, merong dust or meron siyang grease or oil. So, hindi siya masyadong nalinis, kaya hindi kumakapit yung ating glaze. So, as a result, nagkocrawl po siya. So, ang dapat po gawin natin is kailangan po natin linisin mabuti yung ating bisquare. Dapat no grease on the surface. Then, pwede rin po natin i-roughen the body surface with a sandblast. And then, pwede rin po natin increase yung firing temperature ng ating best wear. And also, i-check natin yung specific gravity ng ating glaze kasi baka masyadong malapot siya. Kaya hindi siya kumakapit dun sa ating uh, best wear. And also, another uh, solution is to reduce the feldspar content of the glaze. So, another defect is pinholing. Ito po yung parang may mga butas-butas or pinholes. So, ito po ay caused by carbon articles in the body or by a rapid expansion of moisture absorbed by the body. So, um, ito po minsan nangyayari kapag masyado natin uh, binilisan or yung abrupt cooling ng ating glossed firing. And then, pag ganun din po, hindi po uh, hindi po natin na-control yung ating uh, specific gravity ng ating glaze. So, ayan po, nagkakos ng pinholing. So, ang dapat po natin gawin, ito po is to avoid too rapid cooling. Ganon din po, kailangan uh, ma-eliminate yung dust and dirt dun sa ating best square. Be careful not to overfire the glaze and take care to eliminate sulfur in the air. So, usually po, Yung ating mga B-square para masiguro, masigurado natin na malinis siya from dust and dirt. Usually po, uh, inaano pa po yan eh. Uh, hinahanginan. Ano ba tawag doon? Yung binublower po siya bago po siya applyan ng glaze. Or even ini-sponge pa po siya ng konting with wet, wet, uh, wet sponge para po talaga ma maalis yung dust. Then, another defect is blistering. So, ito naman po yung blisters para pong sa uh, bulutong tubig. 
So, may, parang pwede mo siyang putok-putokin. So, may mga blisters po siya. So, ang result po nito, ay ang cost po nito is sobrang lapot din po ng ating glaze. So, dapat yun nga po, i-control natin yung thickness ng ating glaze. And then, sometimes, however, these faults can be due to overfiring or to the use of soluble fluxes in the glazes. So, yan po. Okay. So, now let's go to the third major topic, uh, which is the ceramic industry in the Philippines. So, under this topic, I will be discussing the potteries in the Philippines the benefits of making pottery, and the ceramic tiles in the Philippines. So let's start with the pottery in the Philippines. So actually, po, the number of potters in the Philippines has risen dramatically in the last few decades. Ngayon po, medyo madami-dami na rin. And because po, nagsulputan yung ating mga plantitas and plantitos, naging interested sila uh, uh, gumawa or mag throw. So, madami na pong mga third generation na potters ang nag enroll for uh, potter's wheel. So, ayan po. So, many have become professional potters na po and trained others themselves. So, ngayon po, so we are lucky po to see a third generation emerging. So, kung nakita niyo po kanina dun sa video na pina pinakita ko tungkol po dun sa mga traditional pottery making po yung mga pots sa mga provinces. So, nakita nyo po medyo mga lola at lolo na po yung gumagawa nito. So, ngayon po, madami na rin pong nagsusulputan ng mga third generation nila. So, nagiging interested na rin po sila sa paggawa ng pottery. So, kahit nga po nagkaroon tayo ng pandemic sa COVID-19, the pottery industry fortunately is able to stay afloat with the booming Plantita and plantito po. So, uh, sa ngayon po, ito po yung nakita ko pong mga potteries in the Philippines. Yung mga famous potters natin dito sa Philippines. We have the Sigrid Bangyay Pottery. Ito po yung makikita sa Sagada in the north of the Philippines. Then we have the Cornerstone Pottery Farm. Ito naman po ay matatagpuan sa uh, Silang, Cavite. And then we have the Crescent Moon Cafe and Studio Pottery. This is located in Antipola City. Then we have Petty John. Ito po yung mga famous uh, mga potters natin, mga Phil Am potters. They are from Calamba, Laguna. And then we have a lot of Pampanga pottery po. Actually po, ang Pampanga ay ang ating fil uh, capital, uh, capital of Philippine pottery po ay nasa Pampanga. And then we also have the Gabisan Pottery. Ito naman po ay matatagpuan sa Marinduque. Then, ano po ba ang mga benefits of making pottery? Kaya madaming mga mga kabataan ang nag-eenganyo nag dito po sa pottery. So, ito po yung mga benefits niya. Number one is creative outlet. So, dahil nga po ceramics, is not only a science but it is an art so madami pong na ilalabas yung pagiging creative natin by pottery and also it increases our optimistic outlook so nagkakaroon po tayo ng um, self identification and self expression so uh, na, na, na boost po yung ating confidence pag gumagawa po tayo ng pottery so also it improves our focus. Sabi nga po nila, ito daw po yung nagiging break sa digital world. Kasi pag nag, nagpa-pottery ka or nagpa-throwing ka, hindi ka, nakakalimutan mo yung cellphone mo. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng, hindi mo pwedeng hawakan yung cellphone mo dahil na, na, uh, madumi yung kamay mo. So, yun. Sabi nila, na-improve yung focus mo dahil nakafocus ka lang dun sa ceramics or sa wear na ginagawa mo. Then, another is exploring and experimentation. So, dahil na nagiging creative ka dito, so nag explore ka, naggagawa ka ng iba't ibang experiment hanggang sa ma-perfect mo yung wear na ginagawa mo. And also, syempre dahil for throwing, na-exercise yung hands mo, yung wrist and arms. 
And sabi nila, it reduces stress. Kasi pag nakafocus ka na doon sa ginagawa mo, nakakalimutan mo daw yung mga problema mo, so nakafocus ka lang doon. So, nare-reduce yung stress mo. And also, it encourage sociability dahil madami na po ang nag enroll dito sa ating mga backyard or mga studio uh, pottery. So, madami kang nakikilala and nagiging sociable ka. And then, uh, it is a natural painkiller dahil nga po nagre-reduce ng stress. So, nakakalimutan mo yung mga problema mo and yung mga masasakit sa'yo. And also, it captures memories kasi po iba talaga yung feeling na kapag nakabuo ka ng isang pottery. And then, of course, it improves the quality of life. So, ito po yung mga benefits of making pottery. So now let's proceed to the ceramic tiles in the Philippines. Actually, konti na lang po ang mga ceramic tiles in the Philippines. So dahil po sa the growing price of raw materials in the ceramic tiles industry sector may limit the expansion and development of the ceramic tiles industry in the Philippines. So dahil po sobrang mahal na rin po ng mga raw materials and then yung cost of electricity so, medyo nahihinder po or nalilimit yung expansion ng ating mga tile industries in the Philippines. Kaya po, naglulook sila for other new methods para po mag-grow and ma-fulfill yung kanilang demands. So, they're trying to develop new technologies and product development. So, ito na lang po sa ngayon yung ating existing mga ceramic tiles industry in the Philippines. We have the Mariwasa. The Formosa, the Euro Tiles, Lepanto, the Grupo Armani, and the FC Tile Depot. So ngayon po, uh, na-discuss ko na po yung uh, traditional ceramics. Now let's go to another type of ceramics, which is the advanced ceramics. So katulad nga po ng sinabi ko kanina, sinabi po siyang advanced ceramics dahil mas mataas po ang kanyang firing temperature, usually po nasa 14, 15, 1600 degrees centigrade. And ito po ay hindi natin nakikita kasi ito po ay ginagamit sa aerospace, sa automotive, sa electronics, and even sa medical. So, isang application po ng advanced ceramics is in the aerospace industry. So, ito po ay ginagamit na po sa mga engines shielding a hot running airplane engine from damaging other components. Ginagamit din po itong advanced ceramics sa mga airframes dahil po high temperature siya and lightweight bearing so pwede po siyang gamitin sa ating mga airframes. And ginagamit din po siya as missile nose cones shielding the missile internals from heat and also for space shuttle tiles and rocket nozzles. So, ito po ang applications ng advanced ceramics sa aerospace. Pwede rin po siyang gamitin sa engine component sa automotive industry. So, meron po tayong mga gas turbine rotor made of silicon nitride. Meron din po tayong mga rotors made from alumina. Then, meron po tayong blast nozzle made from boride oxide. And then, we have refractory bricks made of magnesium oxide, and we have also structural alumina ceramics. So, lahat po ito ginagamit sa automotive industry for engine components. Then, ginagamit din po ito sa electronic application. Sa ating mga cell phones, sa mga IC, sa mga electronic appliances po natin, ginagamit na rin po itong advanced ceramics. And then, the last application of advanced ceramics is in the medical or healthcare field. So, ito po, ginagamit na rin po siya as bone implants po. So, ini-implant siya sa loob ng tao. So, ginagamit din po siya as dental implants. So, uh, yung ceramics po na ginagamit sa loob ng tao is what we call bioceramics po. So, dahil pwede po siyang gamitin uh, sa katawan ng tao dahil po ang composition niya ay 
same composition with our bones made of calcium and phosphorus po. But meron din pong mga bioceramics like mga inert materials like alumina na pwede rin po siyang gamitin sa loob ng katawan natin as implants. So gusto ko lang po i-share sa inyo na ang aming institute under the Material Science Division, uh, nakapag-produce uh, na po kami ng orbital implant. Ito po siya, and orbital plate implant. So ito po ay ginagamit as re replacement for the anophthalmic socket. So once po na bulag ang isang tao, kailangan pong i-replace yung kanyang orbit. So ito po yung ginagamit ngayon. Uh, made of calcium phosphate po siya or hydroxyapatite and beta tricalcium phosphate. So, nakapag-conduct na po kami ng animal studies and also human application po niya. So, ngayon po gusto ko lang pong uh, i-invite lahat po na nandito. Baka po uh, meron po mga doctors, ophthalmologists, dentists surgeons, neurosurgeons na magkaroon po ng interest dito po sa aming project on bioceramics. Pwede po namin kayong maging collaborator uh, para po sa aming mga clinical trials and applications. So, uh, gagawa lang po kayo ng letter of intent sa aming director po. And also, tinatawagan ko rin po yung ating mga Filipino patients po na nangangailangan po nitong mga implants na to. Ganon din po, uh, i-contact nyo lang po ang aming institute for uh, uh, clinical application po. So now, let's proceed po sa mga challenges, opportunities, and the future of ceramics in the Philippines. So ano-ano po ba ang mga challenges ngayon ng ating ceramic industry? So eto po, meron na po ngayon kasing shortage of raw materials. So, medyo konti na lang po, but still, I think madami pa rin pong hindi pa source out ng mga red clay or white clay. And then, yun nga po, dahil yung ating mga uh, second generation or first generation ng mga potters, medyo tumatanda na. So, nagkakaroon na rin po ng shortage of manpower. So, kailangan po natin madagdagan yung ating mga third generation of potters po. At yung mga anak ng mga anak ng mga may-ari ng mga ceramics uh, manufacturing, sana po maging interested din sila sa production ng ceramics. And then, isang challenge pa po is yung high cost of fuel and electricity po. So, medyo mahal na po yung electricity kung gagamit po tayo ng mga electric kilns. So, isa po to sa challenge ngayon. And then, yung change in lifestyle Yun nga po, kasi karan karaniwan ng kabataan ngayon, gusto nila yung uh, uh, white-collar job. Ayaw po nila nung madudumihan yung kanilang mga kamay on making pottery. So, medyo challenge na rin po ito. And also yung substitute products dahil po sa paglabas ng ating mga plastics, mga metals. So, uh, mas durable daw to kasi hindi na babasag. So, isang challenge din po ito. And of course, dahil brittle po ang ating ceramics, so meron po tayong problem sa transportation and yung health hazards din po during firing and during uh, processing ng ating body and place. So, ano po ba yung opportunities and yung future ng ating ceramics dito sa Philippines and worldwide? Actually, actually po, the global ceramics market held a value of $239.53 billion in 2022 and is expected to expand at a compound and annual growth rate of 5.2% from 2023 to 2030. So, napakalaki po ng uh, need para dito po sa ceramics. Basta po, you... So, you can make a decent profit in pottery kapag marunong lang po tayo mag-sell and of course, meron tayong good product to sell. So, yan po. And ngayon po, uh, 
Isa po sa future ng ating ceramics is meron pong bagong technology ngayon na gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo which is uh, additive manufacturing or 3D, 3D printing. Ito po yung pag-produce ng isang item layer by layer using a 3D printer na pwede na rin po siyang gawin sa ceramics. So, papakita ko lang po ang video kung paano po ito ginagawa. Ayan. So, yan po ang 3D printing and ceramics. So, kung interested po kayo, pwede po kayo mag-contact sa aming division po. So, eto rin po, gusto ko lang i-advertise yung mga na-develop na po namin products for industrial application. So, meron po tayong mga grinding bowls, crucibles, spool holder, Terminal boards and ceramic fiber blanket holder. Yan po. And we also have developed yung ating water filter with uh, antibacterial coating of uh, silver, nano silver. Yan po. And ito po yung ating business opportunity plan for ceramic brick production. So actually po, ito po ay ginawa ng ating testing and ay, technological services division po. So, pero ito po ay uh, medyo malaking investment na po ang kailangan dito since malaking production na po ito. But pwede naman po siyang gamitin ninyo as reference po. So, ang, ang investment cost po dito ay around 1.8 million. Medyo malaki po. But malaki po kasi yung equipment cost which is around 1.1 million. But yung annual production po is 194,000 of bricks. So ang magiging annual gross sales po is 4.2 million. And so the, ay, the IRR is 53% and the payback period is only for 2 years. So, yan po. If interested po kayo for ceramic brick production, you can contact po our TST for this BOP. So, ayan na po. So, if you have, if you need any assistance or may inquiry po kayo, you can write our director, Dr. Annabel V. Briones, our director, and also the Chief of the Materials Science Division, si Ma'am Josie Josefina Celorico. So for the references, ito na po yung ginamit kong mga references for this webinar. So this ends for my presentation and thank you very much for listening po.